governance uh, applies equally to all entities, good principles of governance. And it's really based on a foundation of intellectual honesty and pillars of fairness, accountability, responsibility, and transparency. And that applies equally to governments, uh, a tennis club, a small company, a medium-sized company, and a large listed company. From a corporate point of view, uh, South Africa is seen amongst the, our listed companies, are seen amongst the best governed in the world today. And this is reflected in the fact that uh, in 2010 and 2011, the Johannesburg Stock Exchange was uh, held to be, by the World Federation of Stock Exchanges, the best stock exchange in the world because of its listing requirements, which includes the king principles on an applier explained basis. So in South Africa, in the corporate world, governance is seen as very good. But governance applies equally to governments. And I don't have to adumbrate to tell you that we have governance uh, issues in our governments, both national, provincial and local. So it's a change of mindset where directors of a company have to change their mind to deal with these factors and a very changed world in which we've got ecological overshoot, which simply means that companies, which are the biggest users of natural assets of planet Earth, have used and continuing to use those assets faster than nature's regenerating them. And we've got population growth, so demand is increasing. Now clearly not a sustainable situation. So you need that change of mindset to deal with that. Well, it's huge because a company that doesn't take account of that in its long-term strategic thinking is just not going to survive. If you take, for example, a beverage manufacturer that doesn't plan long-term on the saving, recycling, reusing, and replenishing of water is not going to survive because water is the scarcest commodity on planet Earth. And I predict in the next five years, we're going to have water restrictions here on the Witwatersrand, maybe water outages, as we've had energy outages. Um, but certainly, a, uh, for example, the Coca-Cola company, SA Breweries, have now got water engineers in all their breweries, recycling, saving water, because there's an appreciation. Beer, Coca-Cola, main ingredient is water. And uh, water is scarce. And if they run out of water, well, they're not going to have a business. So they're planning. I mean, Coca-Cola's long-term plan is not to waste a litre of water. If they achieve that, it would be fantastic. But they do that in order to show investors, the trustees of your pension fund, that they can invest in the equity of Coca the Coca-Cola company because the board has applied its mind as to how the business should survive in this very changed, turbulent world of the 21st century. And to show you, as a drinker of Coca-Cola, don't say you do, but <laughs> assuming you do, that they're a good corporate citizen and so protect its major asset, which is its brand. Integrated thinking, which is what I've proposed, and uh, as chairman of the International Integrated Reporting Council, we're recommending to companies all over the world, is an integration of thinking of the various functions of the company. So no longer human resource thinking in a silo, the finance department in a silo. Because companies operate and are dependent on six resources and the relationships with their stakeholders. And the six resources, we used to think only of financial and manufacturing capital. But today we have to consider human capital, human rights, uh, human skills, uh, intellectual capital, absolutely critical because we've got to think We've got to carry on business as unusual. If we carry on as usual, we're not going to have a sustainable planet. So intellectual capital is important. Societal capital is important. The ongoing relationships with stakeholders. And that's the critical issue. If you go back to 92 when the committee was formed and then assumed my name, uh, we issued our first report in 94. Uh, which dealt with the question of the inclusive approach with stakeholders and was revolutionary thinking, but not a word on IT in King One. And you just see how quickly it's moved. 2002, a sort of passing reference 
to IT and information systems. In uh, 2009 in King 3, a whole chapter devoted to IT governance and security. Why? Because during that 20 year period, IT and information systems in company moved from being an enabler to enable one to work more quickly and more effectively and more efficiently to being pervasive in the very DNA of a business. If, if an information system had to collapse with Marks and Spencer today, Marks and Spencer would stop operating all its stores around the world. So it has become in the very DNA and fabric of a business. And you won't see it as an asset on the balance sheet. So this is one of the reasons why the extraordinary fact is that 80% of the market cap of companies listed on most of the great stock exchanges in the world are not additives in a balance sheet. They are the reputation of the company, the quality of governance, the quality of its information system. All these things investors are starting to look at before investing your money in the equity of a company. So it's absolutely IT governance and IT security is another agenda item which should be on every board meeting because it's now a critical factor, as I say, in the very fabric of the business. And uh, one of the things is IT security. And uh, I always give the example of uh, the three musketeers, which I read as a boy. The, to convey a message from the one to the other is to write things on a parchment and tie it with a ribbon and put a wax seal on the knot and then put their rings in the. And then the other musketeer would get it out in the field somewhere and um, would see the seal, break the knot, untie the ribbon, and then see the parchment. Now, what was that all for? That was so that he could draw a reasonable inference that there'd be no unauthorized use, access to that information, that he could rely on it and operate on it. Now, that's what IT security is about, that to try and prevent unauthorized use, access to it, and you secure that information because it's a huge asset of the company and it's usually confidential information. Now, the personal information of people a lot of countries have started legislating about the personal information of people. Some companies say particularly their medical records is personal information which should not be available to the general public, particularly for marketing purposes. Hence the Poppy Bill, Protection of People Information Bill, which will become an act shortly. And so South Africa is not different from other jurisdictions. It is and, and a bill which will become an act to secure the information, the private information about employees and people in the company. So it's not taken and used for marketing purposes by King Limit. My leadership philosophy is um, that there's nothing worse than having sight and no vision. <laughs> um, I've had a vision since 2002 about integrated reporting and I've been beating that drum and uh, now I'm very privileged in my lifetime to see it become a reality and, and to chair the world body on it. Uh, I believe that uh, you've got to have a vision and you must keep going to that vision. You're not, you know, you can plan how you're going to do it, but you've got to keep on altering the how to get to the what, to get what you want to achieve. But you've got to have vision and um, uh, you need to be, you need to have thought leadership, you know, original intellectual thought to add and to make a difference. I think that's what leadership is about.